Hi everybody. I wanted to touch base with you guys a little bit regarding aggression because I'm getting more and more cases and more and more phone calls about it, especially this time of year. A lot of dogs are overwhelmed by all the festivities and people visiting and weird blow up things in everybody's yards. Aggression is fear based in most cases, almost all cases, it's fear based. There are some genetic uh, and some health issues that can cause some aggression, but most of the time it's fear based. And we as human beings understand this, but we have a hard time relating it with the dogs. So I use my grandmother as an example because she's such a sweet person, as most people's grandmothers are, I'm sure. And this kind, nurturing, loving, caring person is very afraid of snakes and if you surprised her or she turned a corner and you had a snake she might hit you she might punch you she might flail um, I think about when we're walking to our cars at night especially ladies and someone's behind us and they're keeping step with us or if we speed up they speed up we start to put our keys between our fingernails some of us have mates like we start to do these defensive things because we feel like we have to protect ourselves so that's where a lot of fear comes from. And us yelling at dogs and getting onto them for being afraid doesn't change their fear. I'm very afraid of heights. You can yell at me, get onto me, hit me, shock me, prong me, choke me, whatever it is you wanna do, it doesn't address my underlying fear of heights. I might pretend like I'm not afraid to keep from getting hurt or hit or yelled at, but it doesn't actually take away the fear. It just represses my ability to tell you that I'm afraid. Now, with dogs, a lot of people I hear um, them say that their dog bit out of nowhere without any type of warning. I have to say in my experience, that is very, very rare. And what I normally find is that people are punishing their dogs for warning them. When a dog growls, when a dog shows their teeth, when the dog does something that we deem as dangerous, we get upset, we kind of freak out, no, stop it, no sir, da, 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 da. Well, all we're telling the dog is don't tell us when you're uncomfortable, don't warn us, just bite. We don't need you to growl or show teeth or tell us to communicate with us that you're uncomfortable. Um, we're not accepting that you're uncomfortable. So suck it up, deal with it, don't be afraid. And anybody who's ever been bitten by a dog or has had a dog try to bite them or who owns a dog who's tried to bite people, you understand that's a really, really stressful situation. <clears throat> and I know it seems counterintuitive, but we want dogs that are uncomfortable to growl, to show teeth, to body posture, to look menacing and scary, because that's how they're communicating that they're uncomfortable. And if you take away their ability to communicate, they already don't speak our language. We already are not very good at reading their body language as it is. And if you take away that option, then they bite out of nowhere. So I'm grateful as a dog trainer when a dog growls or shows me teeth and communicates with me that they're not comfortable because I know I can back off, give them some space, slow my approach, um, try something different, but I never yell at them and forward press the situation because that's how you get bit. So. If you have an aggressive dog, if you feel like your dog is getting more aggressive, if you want your dog to be around children or old people or skateboards or whatever it is that makes them uncomfortable, throwing them in that situation, we call it flooding, is the worst thing you can do. I take that back. Probably the worst thing you can do is add aversion. Any type of aversive, negative, painful, scary techniques to try and overcome aggression. Because if I am afraid of something and you are using pain and fear and intimidation to fix my fear, fix my aggression, all I'm doing is pushing it down and pushing it down and pushing it down and repressing it until I'm going to explode. So if you think that your dog being afraid of strangers, that a prong collar is helpful or a shock collar is helpful, and every time my dog growls or lunges or shows teeth when a stranger approaches, I should pinch them, choke them, shock them, then I really want you to think about your fears and what scares you and what makes you feel defensive and would those methods make you feel 
more or less afraid, more or less aggressive. If I am afraid of spiders and you come at me with a spider and every time I scream or yell or run away or throw a punch or do something to get you to go away, you shock me, prong me, choke me, hurt me, I'm only getting more afraid. I'm only getting more defensive. So think about it from your perspective. Think about your fears. Think about how you can communicate those fears. And you don't have to go straight to aggression, but we human beings still do. We still, when we're being defensive, we get verbally aggressive, we get physically aggressive, we say and do really mean things. And we have giant frontal cortexes and the ability to communicate. And so for your dog to be afraid of something to the point that they're willing to hurt someone or something, you really should consider, does my dog need to be in this situation? Can I handle the situation better? And how can I help my dog feel more comfortable with this thing that they're afraid of if I can? 